Hi, Denise here, video four of the five-part alignment series, Aligning in the Flow. And today my focus is the forward fold, Uttanasana, but lots of the things that surround Uttanasana. And this is a very uh, important pose in the sun salutation because you move in and out of it with uh, transitions. And we often incorporate this as a standing um, sustained pose later on in the practice. So let's look at some of the things that go wrong in Uttanasana. Here's what we are often tempted to do, and that is imitate the bendy girl in class. So the bendy people in class can fold at the hip, they can get their body touching, and you know, it, it's really awesome. And they may have the freedom of movement to do that with some comfort. But just remember that having more and more and more flexibility is not really balancing for the body. So if you happen to be one of the more stable people, then this is what it might look like when you do Uttanasana. You might get with your knees straight about this far, and that's it for you. So for you to go any deeper, you would have to do something like this maybe. And that's simply sort of defeating the purpose of the pose. Us Westerners really have to bend our hips. This is really important to us. Whether that's classical yoga or not, this is our life and we need to get into our hips. So how can we get there? One of the things you'll notice right away if you bend your knees is that will give you more ease on the back body. So I recommend to bend your knees as much as you need to, to get the hip bending. So for some of us, that's going to be quite a lot. But this is a wonderful place to practice. If you're pressing into your feet and letting your sitting bone rise, you will feel some sensation, believe me, on the back body. But you are respecting your hips and more important, you're respecting your back because if you fight to get your knees straight and your back looks like this, your lower back is going to take a lot of the pressure. If you allow the knees to bend, then literally both sides of the legs are gonna work to bring you up out of that pose. So when you're in the pose, knees are bent. When you come out of the pose, knees are bent and you'll find that that takes a lot of the pressure off of your back. Once again, you can have a full breath, full strength. You're acting like the body is a unified whole and you're respecting your joints. This equals good alignment and equals more progress in your practice. If you're trying to get deep into the hips, like I mentioned, and, you're, and it's looking like this, can you see how I'm avoiding bending into my hips by doing this. As soon as I bend my knees and I let some of the pressure off of here, I stop trying to bend around my limitation. Now I'm able to progress in my practice. So try that out. Let those knees bend a little bit. Even you bendy people, this would be a better practice for you because you're going to take some of the pressure off the low back when you come up and down out of Uttanasana. And you will have a different experience in forward fold than your ordinary experience of going right into that full straight knee expression of the pose. So remember, there's no necessarily right or wrong way to do poses, but there are ways that are better for you because of what your body needs and what maybe all of us need as Westerners and practicing yoga. So keep that in mind as you, as you practice your day-to-day -day practice. Now I have one more video. It's going to be on Tadasana, and Tadasana is a foundation pose for our standing poses, and we will use a lot of the alignment cues in many, many poses. So it's a really juicy pose to take a close look at. Hope you'll join me tomorrow. If you're having uh, any enjoyment of these videos or you have questions for me, put it in the comments below. And I hope I'll see you on January 27th at the workshop on that day. Thank you so much for joining. Bye for now.